Welcome to my lecture online. So here's the question. What is time? Time seems to be this strange thing. And it's hard to define. So what we want to do in this video is kind of get a feel for time and whether or not we can move forward and or backwards in time. So what do we define time to be? It says that time is what separates the past from the present and the present from the future. So it gives us kind of a way of separating things that happened in the past that we may have experienced, that we can, can, we can go back and re-experience those. That is done, that's in the past. We are now currently in the present. Every moment is a new moment. Every moment is a, a little bit further in time than the moment before. And then we can look at the future. We can kind of imagine what we might be doing in the future. It's something that we haven't done yet, but that will be done in the future. It may be events that we're not doing, but natural events or events in the universe that will happen in the future that haven't happened yet. We know what happened in the past because we were there or there was evidence of something having happened in the past and we can then surmise what must have happened in the past. Currently in the present, we are experiencing moment to moment what's happening from moment to moment. And then we can imagine what will happen in the future because of experience of the past and things that we've learned in the past that we can now utilize in order to predict what will happen in the future. We can be pretty sure that the sun is going to set tonight because it's done so every night for as long as we can remember. So that's what time can be defined as. Simply a separation of the past and the future where right smack in the middle is the present. But how else can we define time? Well, it defines during which events will occur in a sequential order. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll get rid of the during because it doesn't sound very good. How about it defines which events will occur in a sequential order? And that's the key. It seems like things happen in a sequence. Something happens now, and then it happens, and then it happens, and it happens, and time moves forward. For example, when you play a soccer game, you're not going to score the fourth goal before you score the first goal. You'll score the first goal, then the second, then the third, and the fourth, and it will always happen that way, never the other way around. There's no exception to that. So the key is that time kind of delineates events in a sequential manner, and we only can go in one direction, not in the other direction. The units of time are based on the rotational and orbital motion of the Earth. Because we live on the Earth, and the Earth rotates in just slightly under 24 hours, but a solar day is defined as a 24-hour day. 24 hours also equate to 86,400 seconds, since there are 60 minutes in an hour, and 60 seconds in a day, in, a, in a 60 seconds in a minute, and then times 24 hours. So an entire solar day, from one moment where the sun is in a particular position till one day later where the sun is in the same position relative to us, that will take 24 hours. And so everything about time is related to the rotation of the Earth. But then also, we are bound with the orbital motion. The Earth goes around the sun, and we call that a year. The period of that is called a year, and it's divided into 365 days. Now, we found that it's not exactly 365 days, because when we did hold ourselves to 365 days, our calendar began to be skewed, and it began to be warm in the winter and cold in the summer, so we had to make some adjustments to the calendar, and so every four years we add a leap year. And then, since we're still not quite right on the nose, we then add a few more seconds, like every century or so, just to make sure that we stay in tune, because the Earth doesn't revolve around the Sun in exactly 365 days. But then, maybe the most important and interesting, intriguing part, part of time is that time can be represented by a timeline, and it's synonymous to the number line. If you've taken algebra before, we put numbers on the number line, and the small numbers are on the left side, and the big numbers are on the right side, and the negative numbers are further to the left side. So there's a certain order as to how we put numbers on the number line, and in, it is no different on how we put time on a timeline. To the left, we put the events that happened in the past. 
we have a certain point on the timeline that represents the current and then we have something that will happen in the future all events yet to happen in the future we can predict many of them but then other many events we will not know if that's going to happen in a particular way we have no idea what will happen tomorrow in many many ways we can predict some things but we can't know everything about the future we can only predict we can't know anything about the future except perhaps that the earth will keep rotating the sun will keep setting the sun will keep rising those things will continue to happen and our position on the timeline will simply slowly keep moving to the right so that more events will be in the past and less events in the future is there a limit as to how, how far that goes that's the one thing about the timeline is we're not sure how far back it goes we can say that maybe it goes all the way back to the big bang but then did the timeline continue in front of the big bang of course if you go to the left was there a time before the big bang we don't know and will time go on forever in this direction is there ever going to be an end to time we don't know the assumption is there probably isn't but we don't know we live in this moment that moment keeps moving to the right and we don't know how far it will go to the right so in order to measure time we use clocks so clocks are used to measure the passage of time and to tell the time at specific moments if the bus leaves at 10 minutes before 3 o'clock, you better be at that bus stop before 10 minutes before 3 o'clock or you'll miss the bus. There's a specific time that we expect that bus to be there. So we use clocks to denote a specific moment in time, but also we use clocks to denote duration. When you run a race, how long will it take before you get to the finish line? That is the duration. So we use clocks for those things. And then the units of time, we have millennia, which are a thousand years, centuries, a hundred years, decades, ten years. We have years, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So we have some neat grouping of words describing the different lengths of time. But then the big question is, is time absolute? Does time progress at the same pace everywhere in space? And the answer to that is no. And then also, does it depend upon what you're doing? And the answer is also yes there. So in other words, time is not absolute. It is relative. It is relative to position and it's relative to how fast you move through space. So for that, we're going to set up a new video to go through those particular details because that is actually quite amazing about time. We used to think that a second is a second, an hour is an hour, and that never changes. But as we have learned more about the universe, we have now discovered that time, even though it seems to progress only from left to right, from the past to the future, it doesn't look like we're able to travel to the past. However, we don't know for sure yet. But one thing we do know for sure is that time is not absolute, that a second is not a second everywhere that a second can be longer or shorter depending upon where you are or what you do. And so we're going to explore that aspect of time in our next video. Can you believe it? But time is a human invention though. See, that is what some people claim, that time is a human invention, but actually it is not. Time is a word we use to describe something that already existed before we came up with the word. Time has always been there. We just have to give it a name. Yeah, but the thing is, since you give it a name, you quantified it. So we have then put units on, the, on time, right? So that we can talk about time and utilize time and equate time. But time is something that was there. The progression of time is been there from the beginning. So it's not something we invented. It's something that has always existed. It's just something that we now were able to describe you and define. We describe it, we put a name to it, we can put it on a timeline. Just because you put a name to it doesn't mean it's the way it is. Ah, so is time just something that we invented in our imagination or is time actually something that existed that we named? So I'm on the side that time has always existed, especially because time is not absolute. And so time is something that is dependent upon speed, depending upon position, 
and time is something that delineates something that's always existed. So I would say that it's just a name associated with something that exists. But then you go into your little picture there, the now is always changing. If you put now to be zero, that zero is always moving. So we can define a particular moment in time as a zero time. So for example, at the beginning of a race, we call that the zero time of the race. So you can call your now as the zero point that continuously moves, you could do that. Or you could call the zero time the day you were born, or you could call zero the beginning of the century, the and then do everything since then. then. the zero becomes the past. Well, no, because what we could do is we can pick a certain point and say that was the beginning of the 21st century, started right there, and that will begin, become our zero point. And so then anything from then will then be counted as a difference between the beginning of the 21st century and where we are now. So the now keeps moving, so the now keeps increasing in the time measurement relative to a given position. Or you can have a moving zero point, that now is always a zero point, and anything before it is a negative, and anything in the future is a positive. Yeah. You could do either one. So, yes, we have what we used to call the BC and the AD. I think they have new terms for that now. I always forget the new terms. But, yes, so that was, would be one way of saying our timeline, our calendar time started at the birth of Jesus to be at year zero. I think when they then did some studies, they realized that didn't quite line up, but they initially presumed to be the case. So, yeah, we can do, we, can, we get the zero point wherever we want of any sort of thing, calendars. And then we have the zero point of the year. A new year starts at the new days. Day one is the first day of the year. So there's lots of zero points. But again, that doesn't prevent the existence of time. It's just something that we name and utilize and, and describe and put units on. But it's, it's always been there. Yeah, but the time only exists at this moment. So that's when you define time, and some people do that. They say time is what it is at this moment. That is, if you actually look it up on the dictionary, the Webster's Dictionary, it will actually, one of the definitions is that time is this very moment. And so you can also use the word time for that, for a specific moment in time. But again, that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's a definition of time that doesn't really describe time for what it really is. So. Yeah, but then time, if you look at time as this moment, what's in the past no longer exists, and what's in the future hasn't happened. So you can assume that if you say time is now, and that now, of course, continuously moves, then that would be one way to define it, but that's just a way to define it. That doesn't make, make it what it is. I think time is something that's always existed, and we move through that time in a sequential order, from the past to the future. <laughs>